name is David L. Pritchard. I'm 57 years old, born, born on March 18th, 1956. And I'm originally from Boonville, Mississippi, but presently for the last 20 years, 20 plus years, I've lived in Chipley, Florida. The best way to explain a seizure is like having a misfiring spark plug in your brain. I would be in blank stares. You could be talking to me, and I wouldn't know who I was, where I was, I would just be staring. And then I would come out of them, and I could continue talking, but I'm not, I might not be what I know what I was talking about or to whom or anything. You'll be seized up and you'll I'll literally fall to the ground. To use the more common terms, I'd be shaked, rattling and rolling. And uh, that scares a lot of people. That scares a lot of people. The year 93 is when it actually started. I had a wreck. I was 40 miles west of Little Rock, Arkansas on I-40, headed to Oklahoma City. And I had a grand mal seizure, ran into a bridge piling on I-40, took a Capri station wagon and made it smaller than a Volkswagen Beetle. And the front windshield never broke. And the highway patrolman that came to it was in a coffee shop on top of the overpass. So he was there in a short time. And lo and behold, he was a spitting image of Jackie Gleason from Smokey and the Bandit. I remember that. And he came to the hospital to make sure that I wasn't on drugs. Because he told everyone, it was written in his report, that every person he'd ever seen in a car wreck that bad was either dead or going to be. And I didn't have a scratch on me and the front windshield never broke. He told me that day, he said, son, he said, all I can tell you is that the good Lord was sitting in the seat with you and he had something else in mind for you down the road. That is still in the back of my mind today. So I've had a lot of people that meant a lot to me that I can remember. We all tend, to, we all have that tendency to do things until we've been through it. Man's perception of what combat is, what actual battle and war is, you don't have a concept of what that is until you've actually been there yourself. Likewise, having seizures, the negative side effects of drugs, and the perception and reception that you get from family members, friends, co-workers, church members, and strangers, uh, you won't know about it until you've actually been through it. And that's what I went through. For instance, I had friends that I thought would be there to help me that ran as fast as they could the other way. Then I had a friend at one time that was a friend. Then he became an enemy because I hired him and then I fired him. And his mother and daddy, and he, to pardon the expression, but they hated my guts. But as soon as they heard that I was having seizures and was going to have brain surgery, they were the first to ever come to help me. And they put two and two together. My wife's the most special, and my children right there with them, because I could not have gotten through it without them. Uh, one of the articles, uh, to me, that's most interesting that I ever read was a journal of psychology that talked about divorce rates for people with medical conditions. And epilepsy is right up there with um, schizophrenia as being exceptionally high divorce rate for men post-surgery for epilepsy, well up into the 90 percentile. Women post-surgery is about 50-50. So that ought to tell you that I sure enough married a lady a lot better than I am. I couldn't have made it through it all without her and my children being there for me. Since I've uh, been at Chipley, I've had people that have treated me no different. And then you have other people that def definitely treat you different. When people found out I had seizures and were, were going to have to have brain surgery, how I got treated in church, I was a deacon in First Baptist Church, Chipley, Florida. I literally was, they wanted, some of the fellow deacons wanted to throw me out of the church because I had seizures. You look in the New King James Version of the Bible, look at the 4th chapter of Matthew, the 24th verse, 17th chapter of Matthew, the 15th verse, it has the word epilepsy in there. A Greek Orthodox minister I met showed me this. Then he took me back and showed me the word epilepsia in Greek and Hebrew, and it's in the Bible way before any of us ever existed. You find out that uh, Socrates, Michelangelo, Vincent Van Gogh, Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens, Agatha Christie, 
you find out those had it. Nobel, Einstein, Bach, Beethoven may have had it. Hannibal, that led the elephants over the Swiss Alps, he had it. Napoleon had it. It's And Dave Pritchard had it. Uh, so it makes you study, it made me study more and find out that other than the seizures themselves, I'm just a normal person as anybody else. I went through temporal lobectomy, left temporal lobectomy and the hippocampus was removed from me at Shands Hospital by Dr. Stephen Roper. For my first surgery, I think it was in uh, May, May or June of 98. On my way up there, a nurse was taking me to the neurological section and I happened to go by the section where they treat the kids for leukemia. So when I go by that big window, I see a little b a bunch of bald-headed youngins, can't tell little boys from girls, and I'm looking in the window and seeing those kids. And I stop, and the nurse says, come on, Mr. Pritchard, come on, we've got to go get you up here. And I say, and I ask her, I said, what is, tell me what this is. And that's when she told me what they were, where they treat the kids for leukemia. And then she told me about 25% of them don't ever make it out of there. And when I saw those little bald-headed kids, and she told me that, I said, I ain't got it so bad, let's go. That's what made me feel better from being depressed to seeing those children being treated for leukemia. That made me feel a whole lot better that my situation wasn't that bad a deal. And I was convinced that the good Lord wanted me to have brain surgery. So that's how I proceeded. The rest of it, uh, the surgery part of it is, Dr. Roper could tell you about that, I can't. Because after all, I was under anesthesia. But I know when I woke out, woke up from the surgery, there I was in my room, and there I woke up. There, mother and father, there, my wife, Karen. There's three of my sisters there. And I think one of the pastors from the church was there. Uh, and uh, they asked me to, can you tell us who we are? And I went right down the line. I said, there's my wife, Karen, there's my mother, and there's my father. I gave them their names and everything. They were amazed that it came on me that quick. Little beknownst to me, my head was probably about four times as big as it is due to the stress of having brain surgery. Because after all, they cut both of these sides open and they've got those rods in the back. Your head will swell. This is the one aspect that they probably don't like me to talk about. But the very first thought on my mind, they, for, they didn't warn me about this, the doctors did. This happens quite a bit, but they don't tell you about this. The very first thought on my mind, the very second I woke up was suicide. Fortunately, mine was a little different because I asked the doctor, what in the hell is going on? And when I told the psychiatrist that, what in the hell is going on, he realized I was a little different. I was okay because I was not withholding it. I was letting all the cat out of the bag by saying, what in the Sam Hill is going on? That's, I said, where did that come from? Where did that thought come from? But that thought was there. That thought was there. And, uh, but fortunately... It was uh, the positive side of that thought, I guess, to be able to say, what the heck's going on? Where is that coming from? I, I didn't want to do that. If I could look into a crystal ball and have foreseen that I would lose my job, I would lose my income, I would nearly lose my family, I would almost lose my house, I, all these things, the pressure, I, all these things I would go through. And if I could have looked into a crystal ball and foreseen all the negatives, but seen one thing, that I would stop the, that, these the surgery would stop my seizures and I could get off the medication. I would accept all the negatives and continue to go through with it. My words of advice would be to study more about the, the medications you're on, the potential negative side effects of the medication, just to be aware of it. Talk in an open fashion to the doctor about it. Try to find and talk to people with epilepsy that have gone through it. Two places to go on the internet today epilepsyfoundation.org and then epilepsy.com talk to someone that can educate them and tell them about certain situations I've got a friend back home that his daughter went through surgery in Miami at the uh, uh, hospital in Miami for Miami children for the children's hospital in Miami it totally changed her for the better she's off medication and everything and she stopped her seizures too and they came to me to talk about it that little, I don't think that child would have gone through it had she not seen someone that had been successful. And they've improved, and hers was about three years ago, two years ago, and it's a drastic difference. It's a drastic difference. 
here. You can see I lost most of my hair. I lost all my hair, but and then I've got scars. You can't see a single sign on her, which is wonderful for a little girl. She's a teenage girl. She graduated from high school, and her grades and everything jumped way up from post from pre-surgery to post-surgery. Once she recovered and they gave her time, it made all the difference in the world. My name is David L. Pritchard, and I'm one of 26.